My name is Walter de Recht. I'm a program officer at UNESCO Unibo, and it is my pleasure to be talking to you today on ICT and digital literacy for teachers and instructors. In the framework of your training for today, UNESCO Univoc is very pleased to support the UTHM in, uh, in this initiative in the framework of the special edition TVET leadership program, something that I will be discussing later on. Before I start talking about ICT and dig digital literacy for teachers and instructors, I thought it would be useful to perhaps first talk about who we are, as some of you might not know. So UNESCO Univoc is UNESCO's designated center for technical and vocational education and training. Our mandate is to support UNESCO's member states in their efforts to ensure that everybody has equal access to quality TVET. We work on a number of different thematic areas, including digitalization, innovation, education for sustainable development, gender equality and equity, and last but not least, private sector engagement. In addition to these different thematic areas, the UNESCO Univoc also acts as a secretariat for what we call the Univoc Network. The Univoc Network is UNESCO's global platform of Tibet institutions. We have more than 250 members in over 165 countries. And our members include ministries, national bodies, so regulators, training centers, universities, and research institutes. And we are very pleased that the UTHM is one of our members. So this ne network provides a platform for exchange, cooperation, and mutual assistance. There are different ways that the Univox Center can get engaged. On the one hand, we foster international collaboration. There is a Univoc network directory where all of the Univoc centers, so the members of the Univoc network, can see each other's profile, can see each other's interest, and also can see each other's contact details so that they can get directly in touch with other members. We also organize workshops on thematic areas and invite Univoc centers to these workshops so that they can discuss more specifically on key trends. And lastly, we organize global conferences and fora, where again, we invite our network members to come and discuss. In addition to facilitating this international collaboration and peer learning, we also develop capacities through our flagship TVET leadership program, for example, but also through other capacity building programs targeting uh, staff. Finally, we also provide technical assistance to our Univox centers, and particularly through the implementation of our tools and practical guides. So in each of the different thematic areas that I already previously mentioned, we develop guides and tools that centers can use and implement in their institutions. As I mentioned, one of our flagship programs is the TVET Leadership Program, which tries to build the capacities of TVET managers to become change agents in their institutions. In 2020, in a as a response to the COVID-19 pandemic, UNESCO Univoc organized a special edition TVET leadership program. We made a call to all of our alumni, so we have over 200 alumni, to propose, to propose activities in their institutions that would help their institutions and their region respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. We received over 60 applications and we're very happy to be supporting the UTHM in implementing their proposal. So moving now towards what is being discussed today for your training, ICT and digital literacy for te teachers and instructors. I think we first need to address the elephant in the room in a way, the COVID-19 pandemic. For many, this pandemic is a disruption. So whereas previously we were uh, implementing and conducting education and training in Tibet institutions, all of a sudden the pandemic put a stop to this. However, not, we shouldn't only see it as a disruption. We can also see it, for example, as an accelerator. 
Because when we're talking especially about distance learning, what we can see is that in many institutions, there was already a, a transition towards distance learning. Distance learning was already something that we have been discussing for years. And perhaps the pandemic has only accelerated now these ongoing processes. So when we're talking about distance learning, we can look at different levels. We can look at it at, from a systemic level, but we can also look at it from an institutional level. When we're dis discussing from a systemic level, we're looking at whether uh, there are strategies, whether there are plans, whether there are frameworks in place that facilitate distance learning in practice. When we're looking at it from an institutional level, of course, we're looking at the institutional preparedness to deliver this distance learning. Under the institution, we can see that there are different levels. So on the one hand, we can talk about management, whether at the institutional level there are, exist strategies and policies that facilitate distance learning within the institution. We can also look at whether an institution has got the necessary equipment in place, whether they can procure all of the tools. And finally, but not uh, finally, but not last, there's also the TVET staff, a very important component. So when we're looking at the TVET staff, what, which skills and competencies do TVET staff actually need today? There is, of course, demand and supply. From a demand perspective, we can look at what are actually the labor market needs. So what are the ICT skills that students, that graduates will need for today and tomorrow's jobs. Because knowing these skills, so doing the necessary skills forecasting, will enable us to know what are these skills and then what are then the skills that TV teachers need. I think what is very important here to note is that it's not only about transmitting or, or just um, passing on the necessary skills. We also need to look at it a little bit more holistically. So here I would like to point out the, the definition of, for example, digital literacy. Digital literacy is not only just about being able to read online. The definition says it is the ability to find, evaluate, utilize, share, and create content using information technologies. So you can see that the, the definition of digital literacy goes beyond just purely using, but it is also being able to use, manage it to, in order uh, to further develop it. It's a lot more holistic. When we look at it from a supply side, we're looking at what is actually currently being delivered. What are the ICT skills that are currently already in the curricula and the qualification frameworks? What is currently the institutional setup? What training is being delivered to teachers? And what are the new forms of teaching and learning that are already currently happening? One of the tools that I would like to point out is the UNESCO ICT Competency Framework for Teachers. I won't be able to go into it in much detail because of the limited time, but I would recommend that you all look at this framework. UNESCO's ICT CFD framework basically tries to point out 18 different competencies that teachers need in order to move towards distance learning. And this is also done in a very easy to understand manner. So if we look at these three different columns, it moves from knowledge acquisition to knowledge deepening to knowledge creation. And these three different columns basically signify different levels. So whereas knowledge acquisition is basic, knowledge creation is the most advanced level. In addition to these different levels, there are six different areas that the framework looks at. Understanding ICT and education, which is more looking at policies and management, curriculum and assessment, pedagogical approaches, the application of digital skills, organization and administration, and finally teacher professional learning. 
And what I would like to point out here is that we're not only talking about uh, pedagogy, for example, but what they show is, is that a teacher needs to know so much more. So particularly when we're talking about organization and administration, setting up an distance learning platform is not only just about setting it up, but it's also knowing how to manage it. Nowadays, questions, for example, uh, with regards to storing private data uh, is very important. And a teacher needs to know about what are the current rules and regulations and how to go about this, in addition to being able to use the platform. So I wanted to point out one of the different areas to just show an example of how the framework can be used. So when we're talking about pedagogy, we're talking about in uh, how teachers use ICTs to support their teaching and learning methods. If we remember the three different columns, we will go now through the different levels and see what this actually then means. So in knowledge acquisition, Teachers basically integrate technologies, tools, and digital content to support their teaching, but the teaching doesn't really change. So basically, the teacher takes what is currently being taught and also the manner that it is currently being taught and uses ICTs to kind of support what is already there. In knowledge deepening, we're looking at how teachers then use these ICTs to change a little bit the pedagogical approach. So instead of just basic chalk and talk here in the first column, in the second column, we could expect more collaboration, more project based learning. And ICTs are used in order to facilitate this. In the last column, we talk about self management. And this is basically also signifies a change in the role that the TVET teacher will take. So whereas in the second column, the teacher still is at the forefront, in the third column, we're talking more about self-management and self-learning. The teacher becomes a facilitator, setting up platforms to facilitate learning communities through which students can then continuously be engaged. What I would like to point out is two things. The first one is with regards to the ICT tools that are being used. Whereas in the first column, we are still talking about fairly basic tools. In the third column, we can see that the ICT tools have become more diverse and more complex. Secondly, we are talking about the pedagogical approach. So, whereas in the first column, we're still talking about very standard ways of teaching and learning, in the last column, this pedagogical approach has completely changed to more collaboration and self-learning. And what this kind of then shows, this framework shows, is that the teacher's role will really vary depending on which column we look at. So this is with regards to the TVET staff, what, is, what skills the TVET staff uh, need. And what I've hopefully shown is that we're not only talking about digital skills that are needed in the labor market, but we're also really talking about how to manage these distance learning platforms. Then we can now look at the institutional readiness. And in order to discuss the institutional readiness, I wanted to, do, I wanted to bring forward UNESCO Univox Innovation Framework, which was developed uh, during its Skills for Innovation Hubs project. And what this framework looks at is how to promote innovation in a Tibet institution. And it's very relevant to distance learning. Perhaps as a starter, I will go through the different areas. So the innovation framework looks at four different areas in an institution in order to promote innovation. These are leadership and organizational practices, skills and innovation ecosystem, products and services, and finally, teaching and learning processes. So let's start with leadership and organizational practices and also look at how it's relevant to distance learning, for example. Leadership and organizational practices looks at management. So here we can again ask a question. Is there sufficient frameworks 
uh, strategies in place to facilitate distance learning in an institution. Sometimes institutions require distance learning, for example, to be inscribed in the institutional strategy for there to be uh, more pressure. We can also talk about management principle. So uh, is enough staff time dedicated towards uh, continuous professional development? Are staff given enough opportunities to learn about new tools? We can also talk about procurement. Is a budget set aside to acquire new tools? When we're talking about skills and innovation uh, ecosystem, it's an institution's ability to engage with partners around. So, for example, looking at distance learning, we can pose the question, is an institution able to partner with, for example, a company to acquire new tools? When we're talking about virtual and augmented reality, these are expensive. So an institution's ex ability to partner with others to bring these resources on board is important. Products and services. And here we're talking about what is the training and education being delivered at the institution. How has that changed? So making reference again to the pedagogical approaches, we're moving from just purely teaching and learning to more collaborative research projects. Is an institution, in addition to just providing the courses, also able to deliver uh, research based projects to others in the ecosystem. Finally, when we looking at when we look at teaching and learning processes, we can look at a number of different areas. So is enough in service teacher training opportunities being provided? Where while pre service is very important, of course, there also needs to be continuous teacher training opportunities for those teachers that are already in the institution for them to be able to update their knowledge. What are the ICT tools being deployed in teaching and learning? So whereas again moving through the different columns making reference to UNESCO's framework, we can talk, first talk about very basic tools. We saw that moving towards a more integrated approach or more self-management systems, for example, will require more complex and more diverse tools. Are teachers able to use these tools? Are institutions able to provide these tools? So what this innovation framework, I hope, has shown is that institutional readiness isn't only about just teaching uh, teachers and instructors. But we really need to look at the institution as a whole. Because whether leadership and organizational practices, skills and eco innovation ecosystem, products and services, and teaching and learning processes are ready for distance learning, will have a very big impact on an institution's ability to provide distance learning at the end. So we've talked a lot about distance learning. So what forms of distance learning already exist? We're not starting from, uh, from square zero. Again, I won't have time to go into much detail today, but what I would recommend is that you look at the link here below. So when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, UNESCO, Univo uh, UNESCO organized the Global Education Coalition. The Global Education Coalition brings together international organizations, regional organizations, non-governmental organizations, but also companies. And basically, the main thing was to ensure that through, through uh, despite the COVID-19 pandemic, that there would still be quality education and training for all, that everybody would still have access to quality education and training. And what you will find in this link is basically a collection of platforms and systems that are already in place. So we're really not starting from square zero. It's just about being able to identify which distance learning platforms are applicable for us, and then also to organize the teacher training for them uh, in order for them to be able to use these platforms. 
What I would like to highlight here is that when we're talking about, for example, distance learning, there are a wide range of distance learning platforms. We talk about synchronous, asynchronous, and, uh, and hybrid platforms. And perhaps it's worth highlighting that while for academic education, it might have been quite simple to move towards distance learning, for TVET there is a, one particular challenge, practical training and practical work. But even here we can see that there are a range of uh, possible solutions. Some ins institutions have experimented with gamification, others with augmented reality or virtual reality. And it is within this context that UNESCO Univoc is very happy to see that U the UTHM's proposal focused on augmented and virtual reality, because these are definitely solutions for the future. And with this, I would like to say thank you and good luck. Again, UNESCO Univoc is very happy to see that the UTHM is carrying on this uh, initiative. And we really do look forward to the results of the training. Thank you and bye-bye.